Welcome everybody to the Leather Games. We are live and ready to go tonight. Uh, did everybody have a good day at the Pendleton Leather Show? Right. Excellent. Well, we are joined here by several thousand of our closest friends online. So we are live stream and we'll be getting ready to kick this off. Tonight, what is happening? What is the Leather Games? The Leather Games is a competition between three teams. We chose three team captains. The team captains were responsible for assembling their team. They Each team comprised of three people, including the captain. What they have to do tonight is build a bag with a tooling aspect. That's all the direction we gave them. So all the design is up to them, and it's kind of up to them on the fly. Each team is going to get a shoulder of Herman Oak leather. Each team is going to get some chrome tan leather donated by Oregon Leather. Each team is going to get a piece of poster board. Each team gets a bag of hardware, and they have no idea what's in the hardware bag. The, yeah, and the hardware was all donated to us by Weaver Leather Supply. They, there's also a couple other gift bags, because we're giving around here. So we, they have some gifts in their bags. There is two bags on each table that are similar but different. So each team has something a little bit different to work with there. I'll be explaining more as we go on tonight. Um, they do have their tools that they can use. They have, each team has elected to bring one tool that is available only to them. So as we introduce the teams and bring them up, they're going to show us what their one tool is they decided to get. The rest of their tools are on this community table behind me. And they're going to see those here in just a minute. So, without further ado, we drew for positions on the different benches. So, over here on table number one, led by Captain Julie Bacher, their team name, <laughs> Shut Up and Go Slick Your Edges. <laughs> Ladies, come on up. <laughs> Chloe and Denise joining her on their team. Now, we can't touch anything on your table other than your one tool, which is a torch. They've elected to bring a torch. All right. Now, on bench number two, this is the Bovine Bag Builders, led by Captain Aaron Heiser. So, oh, Miss Leandra, Mr. Jim, come on and join them up here. Oh my God, you're so cute. Now, some of you guys might notice some of the people on the teams here. Many of them are instructing classes over at the leather show. Uh, they've instructed classes at a lot of the other leather shows throughout the country, too. So, it's a very talented bunch of individuals we have here. So, what tool did you opt to bring? Jim brought a swivel knife. We almost could have laid money down on that, what your team was going to bring. It's like the most deadly weapon is a swivel knife in Jim Linnell's hand. I love it. Okay. Team number three, Burn Salary, led by Captain Matt Warner. Lexi and Trevor joining him here as well. Now, the presentation of their knife at the team meeting was really well, but your tool that you opted for is your own round knife there. Okay. Now, whose knife is? Is it yours? Okay. How long have you had it? I made it last week, so... Oh, wow. Okay. It's really attached. Really attached to this. This tool's been with you for a week. <laughs> it's your favorite one ever. Okay. So... I am going to reveal the tools that they're going to get to use. Now, the, as they all step closer. Now, yeah, you guys excited for this? Now, the kicker is on these tools, too. They don't know what they are. No, Ross isn't under here. 
Okay. So, these are our tools. Now, you guys have a look at it. There's some strategizing going on amongst the teams here. Now, everything counts as a tool. The thing is, the teams can, are only allowed to use four tools at a time. So, this is a tool, and this is a tool. If you're using both of those, your team just used up half your tools. Okay, now as clarification, because we do have referees in here as well, so our referees, go ahead and step up to your teams here. There, there are some things rubber banded together. So this would be a finish with an applicator. If they're rubber banded together, it counts as one tool. Fair enough? I see I'm generous, right? Okay, are you guys happy with the tool selection? Fair, fair to Midland. Okay. I feel like somebody's, you guys are worried about it, but that's okay. All right. Now, to officiate tonight, we do have three judges that are going to be uh, watching these teams. They're going to be watching for their resourcefulness. How did the team do with the tools, materials, and time available to them? They're going to be watching for their efficiency and teamwork. So did they work together as a team smoothly? And their functionality of the overall product. Is it a bag with a tooling aspect? Does it work well? Is it appealing to the eye? Just the overall product. And they're going to be placing these teams first through third. Okay. Now, again, when we say go, each team can get four tools. The tool you brought counts as a tool. Okay. Now, here's the other kicker is we're going to have to start with only one person from each team. So the captains are going to come and take your tools for your first four tools. Just to make it easier on our referees. Because if we have five tools in play, that's a penalty. The whistle's going to blow and there's a one minute penalty. The team has to put all their tools down and do nothing for one minute. Now, because we have speed and sharp objects in play, we do have a first aid kit here. We're limited on the number of band-aids and things, so use them sparingly. And the rule of the shop is, if you have to use the first aid kit, you must sign the first aid kit. You guys, oh my gosh. You guys should hear the amount of whining behind me on what tools they have. Okay, fine. One. No, you can, your team captain can come get four tools. I have one here. We're good. So we'll leave some tools in there too. Huh? Yeah. Can you look? Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll take them out. There we go. Oh goodness. Gosh, Barry, do you know how much whining there was? Because there wasn't a Barry King tool up there for a minute. Okay, now we have Barry King tools up here. Everybody happy now? All right. <laughs> Quality product, yes. Okay. Now I really want to Calcutta the teams off maybe too. We'll have to work on that for next year. So you can get your side bets going on who's going to win here tonight. Referees, are you ready on your teams? Okay, 
Judges, we do have all of our judges in play here. One, two, three. Okay. I got a timer. You got your timer set? All right. Pendleton, how about you? Are you guys ready for the leather games? Okay. I'm going to get clear out of the way for injury sake. Let's give you guys a countdown for go. They can grab four. All right. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Uh oh, we lost a pencil underneath. Now we got it there. All right, now they're diving in. They can have four in addition to their tool, but they cannot use it. Yes, you may open your bags. Yep, you can open your bags. It is full on go time. The timer has started. They have one and a half hours to build this bag. They're going to be designing on the go. Now, some teams, I'm sure, had some strategy beforehand. So we'll go around and take a peek at some of their extra goodies that they have. So one of their, in one of their bags, we had an adhesive in this bag. So team number one got some double-sided sticky tape there in their bag. Let's see what team number two got in their bag. They had some sort of an adhesive in theirs. We have some aquilum in there. Team number three, what did they get for their adhesive bag? So their adhesive bag, we got binder clips. Those might come in handy when it come to building the bag. They're working pretty quick. Lexi's sorting through the hardware bag to figure out what they have to work with. If you guys have your empty bags, you can just stuff them right under here on the shelf, no problem. All right. Now we gotta see. Every one of these guys is used to working by themselves in the shop. Now they're, now they're having to work together communicate, figure something out. Now each bag has to have a tooling aspect to it. So far, so far we haven't had any team make it to their tooling bench yet. Many of you guys may know Misty Shaw already, but we'd like to welcome you guys and uh, talk about some of the people that are supporting uh, the Leather Games here. First, can we give a giant shout out to Joe and Marty for hosting us this year? Thank you. This is awesome, and thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to Pendleton to support. You can come to the um, Pendleton Leather Show, take classes, and join in on the fun. So, as you can see, we've got plenty of sponsors for making this event happen. Number one, where's Adam? 
Adam Love, Herman Oak Leather. There he is. He sent shoulders for each of our teams so that they have the most supple, most luxurious tooling leather out there. Correct? Is that right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> we want to thank Oregon Leather. Where's my Oregon Leather team? Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. They donated our bag leather, so our chrome tan leather. Thank you so much, because guess what? No bag is being built without that. We've got um, Weaver Leather. As Joe mentioned, they sent all of the hardware for our teams. So thank you, Weaver Leather, even though you're not here. We hope you're watching. We hope you're watching the live stream. We have Matt doing something amazing with this water. <laughs> yeah, so we have the first leather hitting the tooling, Mitch. Matt Warner with Burns. Now also you have to notice when he wet his leather down for casing your leather, a lot of people really worry about just how you case your leather and the exact process for it. Do you use a sponge? Do you use a spray bottle? What's the right way to do this? Well, we didn't give them either. We just gave them a bottle of water. So we're getting the second one over here on the tooling bench. Chloe's figuring out, looking to be resourceful. Matt had just kind of poured it into his hand and splashed it around. Here we go. Chloe spills it down on the table and then runs the leather through the water. You gotta love the ingenuity when you take things away. As leather workers, we're kind of spoiled because all these awesome tool makers and manufacturers and there's so many things to work with. I mean, where did Barry go? Barry is like really spoiled us all, but Everybody used to use like nails and bolts and figured it out, made it work. So we're kind of pushing them to the limits on some of that stuff here as well. Okay, let's thank some of our other sponsors. So Springfield Leather, who knows Springfield? Yeah, yeah, they sent all sorts of things. Fee being leather dye, they, exactly, woo! They sent adhesive, they sent slicking agents, they sent glue, they sent all sorts of awesome things. So thank you, Springfield Leather. Also, Learn With the Loom. Got to give a shout out to them. We brought a whole bunch of tools from the studio. So a lot of these up here on the shared tool table are from Learn With the Loom. Obviously this guy right here, 23 plus. Oh, yeah. Go, Joe Mailing. We've got machines and whatever else he filled this in with, plus his um, creativity in, in all of this. So we'll, we'll go see what everybody else is up to. Yeah. And when we talk about machinery, too, if you guys notice, there's three machines back behind these teams. There's a NP4 Skyver, so a bell knife Skyver. There's a class 26 sewing machine from Cobra and a class 18 sewing machine from Cobra. Now the thing about these machines, we talked about their tool limit, right? Each team can only use four tools at a time. Well, the machines count as four tools. So if you want to use a machine, the rest of your team, all the other tools have to go back on the table before that machine can run. So they really have to plan it out because when a machine's in use, everything else is at a standstill. I think we're gonna check in here and Yes, Leather Machine Co. If you walk through my shop in there, you'll see a whole bunch of a Leather Machine Co. items. We love Leather Machine Co. We appreciate their support here at the Leather Games as well. So I see Matt's using his wet technique in the hand. Now, we'll look over here. Yeah, 
Now this this is a technique for you. So Chloe's making making her way. Scribed a perfect border using her thumbnail along that. All right, our judges walk looking through. They have to keep an eye on all three teams because they're placing them first, second, and third in each category. Our referees are assigned one per team to make sure that they're using the right number of tools there. Let's check in on team two and see what we have going on here. Things are a little tight quarters around here, so everybody's working working around each other. Jim getting his leather cased up as well. Aaron and Leandra working together. Both are phenomenal bag makers, so I don't know who's leading or following in this dance, but it got to be interesting. Trevor's got his tool of choice, that head knife going, getting parts cut out. All right, he's making his way up, checking parts against what Matt's carving out, making sure things are fitting, looking good. Matt's got his swivel knife going to town over here. These live competitions have been fun. This is, uh, this is the fifth live competition that I've put together. We've, we've done it with the Pendleton Cattle Barons for a few years. They've hosted live competitions here in the shop as well. Last year we did a swivel knife competition, uh, ran it in a bracket form. We actually have done a team competition similar with a little different rules, but we were a similar competition as a team over at Pendleton Cattle Barons, and the, it was a two-person team at that competition, and the winning team is here tonight. Both Chloe and Denise on team number one here, our Shut Up and Go Slick Your Edges team, they were actually the winning team for the Pendleton Cattle Barons live competition. Jim's made his way to the tooling bench here, getting his swivel knife going. All right. Chloe working on her strap. Julie and Denise. We're back here working on, looks like the main body of their, <laughs> they're feeling confident in it too. High fives back there, progress is going. Girl power, she says, the, the one all girl team here. Matt down on team number three has uh, what appears to be a bevel rolling already. adopt the same rules out in the middle bay here as we do in the shop. Rule number one is don't cut yourself. Rule number two is if you break rule number one, then don't bleed on the leather. Now you work side by side with Matt all the time, right? You get to work with Matt in the shop. Do you ever see him tooling this fast? 
usually in the shop he go, slows down and takes his time, but he, we'll see how he handles the pressure. Okay, well, you're going to have to hold him to it when you guys get back in the shop. You're like, man, speed it up. I know how fast you can tool. <laughs> He's got, looks like two boot vamps already. Or not vamps, but two collars. About half tool course. there. <laughs> We talked about their adhesive bag that they got. They also got one other bag with their goodies in there, and that was lace. So they each got a couple spools of lace, but different from each team. So whether they decide to use these or not, looks like Burns came up with these two different shades of brown. So whether they decide to use that in their project or not. Team number two got a turquoise and a metallic gold. And then over here on team number one, I don't know what color their lace was. They, they have it all covered up, but I think they have a pink and kind of a rose color in with theirs. So we're gonna do a time check here real quick. Oh, we do have a timer on the screen. Okay, there we go. So our timer's running down. We have an hour and 13 left. So you guys are over 15 minutes into your project already. Does anybody feel like an hour and a half is too much time? tools and figuring out whether they can get another tool or not. All right. We got to see if we can get a look up here and see some technique going. So Jim's working along with his swivel knife, but he was also able to just turn that knife around and use the cradle of that knife as a bevel, as a push bevel, to get some beveling going on his pattern here. Now there's finished products up here as well. We have a good selection of Phoebe's finished products. There's Resoline, tan coat, antique, several different dye colors, but they're going to have to decide if they have enough time to use, use these finishes and what they're going to be able to put a finish on. Oh, yes, Matt. Matt's got his water bottle as a weight as well for his tooling. Gave us all these rivets and no rivets You're welcome. Whoops. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> there. Aaron, do you use a rivet setter other than this one? Do you use a rivet setter other than that one? Trying to be all formal, I know. Oh, I better get out of the way. We got another tool selection coming up. Denise getting, ooh, picking a round drive punch. No one, nobody's chosen to use my butterfly stamp. I'm a little disappointed. You're not done, okay. Mike. Matt, come on. 
I can't believe they're getting it tooled without that. Tool count there, yeah. <laughs> okay, team number one had to switch, they had the wrong size drive punch. Now they're set to go with what they're happy with. Let's see, team number two. Aaron's making his way through the hardware bag to figure out what they have. There you go. There's some fringe going on this bag, I can see. Looks like we have some sort of fringe going on team number one as well. Better get out of the way, another tool switch. Ooh. Oh, what they the tool they would really like is not there. So that's a little bit of the strategy as well. Some, uh, some teams might want a tool or really need a tool, but it's not here. They were just up here looking for a specific knife and that's already in play. One of the other teams has that. And I don't even know if one of the other teams is actually using it or simply holding it, using it as a tool count. There's nothing that says that you have to be using all four of your tools at one time. If you're able to get by with three tools and just want to hold one that somebody else may need. Yeah, that's why with these live competitions, I have to keep switching them up because if we did the same thing, they wouldn't know what they were getting, right? They, they have to uh, they have to strategize new every time they must be keeping a pretty tight count on their tools so they haven't heard any referee whistles yet Chloe's got some great decorative cut work going here. I'm assuming this must be a strap for a bag, it looks like, a strap or a collar for it of some sort. And they're working on extras for their bag. It looks like some adornments for the bag. Jim working his magic with his swivel knife. He's got a pattern cutting in, beveling, and it looks like we even have some shading going there. I can see why Jim wanted to pick that swivel knife. He's been able to cut, bevel, and shade with one swivel knife. It's almost like he's practiced with that before. It's almost like what he's doing. We'd like to thank our judges that are here with us. Noah Greenspan judging, Bruce Johnson, and Tim Alden. All very knowledgeable and know what they're looking for here on these teams. They do. They have daubers in them and the daubers count 
along with the die as one, one tool. A little more light? Yeah, I can't see. Uh-oh. The lighting in here is bad. All I can see is shadows. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now the cross team conversation begins. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Some of you guys, how many in this room have built a bag before? <laughs> Lots of hands. Okay. What is the average time it would take you to build a bag? <laughs> I mean, not an hour and a half? Two days? All right, yeah. Think about all the steps that goes into this. Not like that. How about designing your own bag to build? Right? So not even just talking about the straight up build time, but the design time that goes into it as well. Now granted, you're in your shop by yourself most times, right? But even with help, <laughs> you, these guys are designing the whole bag from scratch and building it and communicating. Because I don't know about anybody else, but I know me, I sit in my leather shop by myself, and I get along with me real good. But when you have to communicate with other people and sort it out and work together and who's doing what, it gets a little more interesting. <laughs> Looking at time here, we're right at about an hour left. So we are 30 minutes in already. We're 30 minutes in already. Yeah, you guys are rocking. Do you, do you think that's you've had too much time with an hour and a half? So I'm loving the design that we got going here. I'm curious. I'm I'm learning as we're going here too. I've built quite a few bags. I've never built one with a bunch of triangles here. So this is going to be exciting to watch and see how it plays out. Now, I got to know if I can interrupt you or if I can bug you while you're working. You what? I said if I can bug you while you're working, yeah. I got to know who's actually slicking the edges on your team because your team is shut up and go slick your edges. Um, I think we're going to all pitch in. Teamwork. Makes Team, teamwork. teamwork makes dreamwork. There you go. You're all pitching in. Okay. Doing our tool count there. Oh, Aaron's checking the tool table. Now, Everybody's working real fast here, up against the clock. And it's a little different working when you know there's a deadline, right? We're one this... minute away from one hour. Okay. One and a half minutes. Yeah. This is like the last minute Christmas rush on steroids, right? <laughs> this is Christmas Eve, you're ready to get it under the tree for your neighbor or something. of people in on our live stream here that's great uh, the only thing I'm disappointed about is I can't see the chat that's going on on all the online because I bet that is great right now so here 
I got to tell you this. Each team was allowed to bring one tool that they could use, and that tool is available only to that team, right? So we had the uh, torch over on team number one. What did we have? We had Jim's swivel knife on team number two. So team number three, Matt Warner, he says, my tool's a little heavy. I'm going to need some help bringing it in. I'm like, well, you have a team. Bring it in, right? So he brings it to the meeting. They bring this big old tote in. They'll carry a whole tote. And they said, it's a cutting tool. I'm like, well, it can't be machinery. A machine counts as four tools. It's got to be one. He said, it doesn't run on electricity. It's like, all right, well, let's see. Let's see what your cutting tool is. So he opens the tote, and out pops Ross <laughs> holding the knife. <laughs> that was Matt's cutting tool that he wanted to use. <laughs> so... We had to have a judge's rule, and the knife was not actually attached to Ross, so we couldn't use Ross himself, but they did get to use their head knife. Now, they're opting to use their adhesives that they got on team number three, their bag clips. There is also adhesive up on the table here as well. We got that torch going into play on team number one. Denise is down here smoking something in the corner. Oh no, she's making leather flowers here, it looks like. Okay. Uh oh, now she's got to figure out how to turn it off. There we go. All right, we're gonna we're gonna mosey back here, talk to our judges here for just a minute. Well, I what do you want to be in their spot? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like you said, the Christmas rush, and you're working in your shop, but you don't got a bunch of people watching you. So I definitely wouldn't be want to be in that spot for sure. <laughs> so now, Aaron, I love this slicking method here that you got to see. Now. Everybody wants to debate on what's the best slicking agent out there. Aaron just puts his heart, soul, and DNA into this project and slicks it up on his jeans. So doesn't makers have an edge slicking solution? I, <laughs> That's what I you're mean, buying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what slicking solution is the best to use? The one that you have, the one that's available to you. We have lots of tools in this industry and things that make things easier, but sometimes you just start with what you have. So, Bruce, what do you think about this selection of tools they got here? Yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of interesting to see who's doing what and who's hogging what. So, as one quote was said a little bit ago, it's not necessarily tools you want to use, tools you want to keep the other team from using. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, getting that strategy in there. Uh, so, Noah, you're quite the bag maker and stuff. What do you think about their design time that they're having to deal with here? They did a really great time. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of different styles of bags being made at the same time here, so that's, that's pretty cool. Everybody's doing something completely different. So, Awesome. Well, we appreciate you three being here and taking this all into consideration. Now, each judge is going to be rating their teams as they see, first, second, third in all these categories, and then we'll be tallying things up to see who our official final winner is. We are down to 56 minutes. We are less than an hour away from deciding the champion here. How are we doing over here? Very good. Very good. So what's your guys' strategy going into this? Uh, we're, we're a team anyway, so our teamwork is kind of what is going to make us, you know, be good. Okay. So you guys all work together at Burn Salary, kind of on a daily basis, and banking on that constant working relationship is what's going to... 
Teamwork makes dream work. That's why I keep hearing here. So you guys are confident in your teamwork, communication. It looks like watching you guys over here, you're used to communicating together and getting stuff done. So this is good. Now you guys are at a point where you're waiting, right? You're waiting for your tooling. Is that what's happening? switched up his slicking agent here, decided to go ahead and use some of that tokenol. Okay, Burns coming up for a tool switch here, putting down a round knife, picking up some leather craft cement. Now this leather craft cement, I think, is going to be maybe a little different challenge for them. Most of the makers are used to using a solid contact cement. That one's going to have a lot more stick to it. Leather craft cement works great if you have a lot of extra dry time. It does take a little while longer for this to dry, so it's a lot different to work with than a contact cement. Now, Jim is going to town on his tooling piece here. Again, cutting, beveling, shading, and he hasn't changed a tool once. He is still using his one toolie broth, that one swivel knife, and doing everything with that knife. I don't know how many years of experience Jim has in the leather world, but it'd take a while to count it all up, I guarantee it. Okay, we have our first machine in use. We're gonna come back here to the machines. Julie, with shut up and go slick your edges, is on the machine. Oh, this machine was used for a class yesterday, so it was turned down a little bit. So we had to turn that machine up. All other tools are back down on the bench. Julie's getting fanned off here. Getting a little massage, or team really doing their work to take care of her here. Hopefully they don't run out of bobbin. Oh, they did check their bobbin, okay. Nice double stitch there, looking amazing. Aaron still slicking that same piece of leather. It's going to be glass edges on this. Tell you what, finish work is a big key on making any high quality product. And you don't have to spend much time on your edges, but that more time you spend, the better you're going to get those. And it's going to make a difference in that overall project. And you got to remember one of the categories these judges are looking at is the overall product, the functionality of that bag, the appeal of it. So they're going to be checking for things like edges. Yeah. Right. 
don't forget, take care of your bartender there in the back. And if you're getting hungry, Almost Home Bistro, just around the corner here in the food truck. Best burgers in town, hands down. Absolutely love them there. So they, Almost Home Bistro, they join us here at the Shootgate Marketplace during the Pendleton Roundup. Uh, if you guys are in town for the Pendleton Roundup, come right back here to this location. We fence off the entire property, bring in 31 other small businesses and makers in with us. And we have live music and food and beer stand and a really fun time. So we'd love to see you guys all back here to join us for Roundup as well. She almost ran away. I'm not going to let her run all the way away, though. My wife, Marty, I'm gonna, I want to bring her up and introduce you. She's not listening. She's not paying any attention to me. Would anybody that knows her want to get her attention and send her up to me? That would be amazing. Yes, she was ignoring me, but now she's not. Now she's here. Come on up here. Come on up here. I thank you. <laughs> you got to get on this side of the camera, though. There we go. All right. Yes, I'd like to introduce my wife, Marty. She is the absolute organize, organization behind everything and makes it all work here. Uh, any of you guys that have ever ordered things from 23 Plus and get them on time and packaged neatly and have videos that go up on a regular cadence. That's my wife that makes this all happen. I'm just a scattered mess, so. Thank you. Yes, thank you, love you. And she's gonna show you right where Almost Home Bistro is. She's gonna make her way there right now and go get some dinner. Okay, let's see how we're doing up here. So the other thing Matt's contending with right here too is a little bit of stretch in that leather. We didn't give anybody anything to tape the back of their leather with. So that's growing on him just a little bit as he's tooling here. But good use of resource and weighting that down with his water bottle. Looks like team number one's still back on that machine. So all other tools are on the table, they're waiting on that machine to get done running. Jim over here going to town on his tooling piece. Leandra and Aaron, looks like they're working on bag parts here. <laughs> Andrew's got fringe going. So I got, is this the knife you would typically choose for cutting fringe? No. You're having to get by with a tool you wouldn't necessarily want. I just realized the tool that I want has actually been returned, but I've already done this much, so I'm just going to Okay. She just, she just noticed on the table the tool that she would prefer has been returned, but she's made it this far using this knife. This is a utility knife with a break-off blade. Not her ideal choice for cutting fringe. What would you prefer, a rotary knife? I would use a rotary knife, and I like to use that clear quilter's ruler. Okay, yeah, a rotary knife with a clear, clear ruler would be her choice. But it looks like you're doing a phenomenal job with what you have to work with, though, so.
Jim's heading back to the table, a little communication going there. They're having to do a tool count and see Okay, so Jim has put his swivel knife down and switched to a pencil. Because the pencil does count as a tool. Lexi's checking out the finished products there. She opted to, what did she go with? She grabbed some resiline, it looks like. Putting, putting her antique back. They're having to switch and go for their edger now. Now what do they have? They got a swivel knife going. A swivel knife, an edger, and resiline are their four tools in play right now. Team number two, they have a pencil, tokenol, a straight edge, and a box knife are their four tools in play. And team number one is still rolling with their sewing machine. Looking at our time, we are 43 minutes left to go here. Yes, that's a goodie bag. That does not count as a tool. That is good. The glue or the adhesive that came in your goodie bag is a free use. That does not count against you. So Chloe's having a look at the table, figuring out what tools they're going to want to come back to after they get that sewing machine shut down, figure out what their next tool grab is going to be. What do you think, Chloe? How are you guys doing on time? What's yours? What's not yours? Most everything. I just don't want to take the books to anything that isn't yours. Everything in the plastic tool rack is mine. All right, they're up here strategizing, trying to figure out what they're going to go to next. Okay, their machine is off. They're ready for more tools. Okay, let's see what they go with here next. They're checking it out. We're looking to see if, what they have. We have a stylus and modeling spoon here. Okay. We're only using one tool right now, so I'm going to grab... So we're looking to burn threads here. They're using their torch to heat up the end of the stylus. They're doing good on their tool count. Nobody wants to get caught with five tools and get that one minute penalty. When we're looking at 
only an hour and a half to do this project. We're down to the last 40 minutes as it is. Nobody wants to get caught. We're, we're over halfway there. And that one minute penalty would, I don't know if it would do them more harm in the long run of the actual building or just more harm mentally, having to sit there and watch everybody else work for another minute. Okay, so they just switched out there. They put tan coat back, picked up some gum trag. Yep. Keeping track on their tool count, they're doing good. I want to thank our referees that are here with us, keeping a close eye. Amber on table number three here, Cray on table number two, Hope on table number one. Cray, he just got back with doing a, a bit of an internship or a program with Tony Pedrini, or with Tony and Pedro, I guess. Pedro was down there, really, uh, who you're doing it with. I'm going to get out of the way. Matt's going for a tool switch here. We're good, we got four tools in play. Yeah. Well, Matt looks like he must be working on a strap at this point. Started with a decorative cut strap, now he's adding some veiner in there. Matt was saying earlier he's really impressed with the lighting situation here at his tooling bench. He's loving it. <laughs> well, his, his hat is shadowing him pretty good here. <laughs> All right, shut up and go slick your edges is working on that here. Looks like you're getting things slicked up, some teamwork going into play. And they've opt for gum trag there. Love the teamwork, communication. Leander's having to get some things fanned here. They're trying to get a little bit of dry time set in on their adhesive. Team number three, we have a finish process going on, getting a little antique and top coat going there. Now this is all your ideal dry time that you guys are after, I'm sure. I think everybody's starting to feel that time crunch a little bit. They start looking at their finished products here. Got his tooling done. Matt, are you all done tooling? He's done. He's got all the tooling done. All right, now he's going to come back around, see what his team has going construction wise. What I really love is that all three teams were giving the same things to work with here. Granted, the tools are having to bounce back and forth on, but the materials that they got are the same. And we have three 
distinctly different bags that are coming together. See lots of high fives going on team one. Confident. All right, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna talk to Braden for a minute. Keeping a close eye on Burn Saddlery over here, this team. What do you think, how are they doing? We haven't lost any fingers, so that's good. That makes Monday a lot better. No, they're doing awesome. It's a good group and they all have amazing skill sets and they're working together really well. It's fun to watch. Excellent. Now, seeing this speed and productivity, does that raise your level of expectation come Monday? It, those guys always <laughs> exceed my expectation. I, I can't even fathom how fast they do things, so it, it's always fun to see in the shop. So this is almost like a typical day. Um, less cussing because there's a camera on. <laughs> Love it. All right. Matt's going to work on the edges there. He's actually using just some straight water on that. They're getting, they're getting close to some sewing. They're going to be ready to take on those machines here pretty quick. design consultation going here on team number three. Oh, excellent. I love the comments here coming in on social media and stuff. Tim Hawk, wish I was here. Greg Smith, seen a lot of my leather heroes. Man, I tell you what, this room is filled with leather heroes. This is pretty amazing. Uh, it's kind of a who's who in the industry in here walking around. It's really neat. We, uh... <laughs> Not only do we have heckling team to team, but now we have heckling from the peanut gallery on the side here. Look, I found this on the ground, and I know. Hey, do you want to get your husband disqualified? I'm watching you, Matt. Wait a minute. Wait, Aaron doesn't have a right. It's like they're working on that dry time with their glue here. Yep, before a sewing machine starts, all your other tools have to be back to the table. Double check on their, their tool cam, making sure a machine can go. There we go. Matt getting that getting a little assistance, getting that machine turned on, ready to go. All right, team number one, running around, getting another tool. What did we switch out for? We are going for the antique finish. Part of that antique finish was rubber banded together, and that is rubber banded with that. That goes together. Making some decisions on lace with team number three. Team number two. Looks like they're working to turn up the speed on the 
sewing machine here. So a team must have decided to turn that down a little bit. We're getting some bobbin winding going here. Okay, team members dodging around. We got two machines in use. So that means the rest of the team is standing in wait. We are 30 minutes out. 30 minutes out. You guys have been working already for an hour. You have 30 minutes left to have a completed bag. Remember, you must complete a bag with a tooling aspect. We are getting, going to be down to the wire here, getting these constructed all the way. Jim's taking advantage of the time while they're working on that machine. He's able to air out his tooling piece, get some of the moisture out of that. Uh-oh, we're having to re-thread here with team number two. Looks like they're... There we go. We're back rolling now. Machine is... Yeah, we were close with a whistle there. I had a whistle. They walked around with, a, they walked around with their head knife, but they didn't use it. Okay, that was their tool they brought. So we're going to check in with a referee here. You had your whistle almost up there getting ready to blow. What did we, what did we run into? They were walking with their head knife towards the sewing machine. Okay, but luckily it was not... That was their tool that they had opted for. <laughs> Bruce wants to change the change the team name on team number three to Running with Knives. So we have Shut Up and Go Slick Your Edges and Running with Knives down here on team number three. I feel like we get down close to the wire, it's going to sound like a horse race calling it in. Okay. Now, what tools do we have here in play? Team number one, they're putting on a finish here with Resoline. Great Phoebe's product. They're very limited on their tools. Yeah. They're, so they've dug into their hardware bag and figuring out what hardware they want to put on this. In all fairness, that other machine does have a thread clippers. So we're going to put thread clippers on this one. Matt, you have, that is thread clippers next to your machine there. You can use that knife for your threads. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, team number one, we have a whistle. Team number one, you have a whistle. So, your time has started. You have one minute. We have a one-minute penalty on team number one. We had premature usage of the 
sewing machine with a tool still on the table. It had not been returned to the bench yet. Okay, we have a countdown for our penalty box. I, we are 30 seconds into your penalty. You can be set and ready to go on that machine, but you cannot go until it starts. 23, 22, 21. We got 20 seconds down there. Okay. Team number one, our penalty is down to 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Team number one, you are back in play. Was that the longest minute ever, Denise? Yes, it was. It was. We got booed. I'm so sad. Well, I don't think it was a direct boo. Yeah, you're probably Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Don't cheat. <laughs> What do you think of this time limit we have here? What do I think of what? The time limit. The time limit? It's challenging. It's challenging. I mean, I can't make a bag in, a, in an hour and a half. So I'm excited, though. I think we got something really good going on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel you guys are working pretty good together as a team? I think so. We're playing on each other's strengths. We each know what we're really good at. So we've assigned each of us what we're really good at. And I think it's working. Awesome. I think the other team should be scared. I think the other team should be scared. All right. I love it. All right, so team number one, back to work on that machine. Team number three, they are also over here on a machine. Matt's going to town, sewing things up. Jim, your work in between your pedals, was that all with the pencil? Sorry? In between those pedals, I see some detail and shade, shadowing coming up. Was that done with that pencil? Or was with the pencil. With the pencil. Yeah. The good old number two pencil brought in all that shading and depth out of there. And he used a pen to get a whistle pen. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jim, what did you think when Aaron called you and asked you to be on this team? Told him I'd uh, be delighted to. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this kind of a thing, improvising on the fly is something that I've had to do most of my life. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't all that hard to come up with something, you know. Yeah. How, how many years have you been doing leather work? I mean, I know, I'm going to make you roughly. Give me a rough number. How's you're that? You're trying to date me now, aren't you? Um, <laughs> Uh, well, I was telling the, the class today that um, I got my beginner set of tools 57 years ago this year. And wow. So. 57 years ago, you got your beginner set of tools and been going ever since. Have you ever been involved in a live competition like this and been down to the wire with time and happened to work with a team? Um, yeah, a whole lot. It's called teaching classes. Um, <laughs> you have so much time to get these people through whatever that project is and so yeah doing something and getting a, a bunch of other people through that same project on time yeah I've done a lot of that yeah so I want to know how do you feel your students are doing here in this class tonight they're stayed out of my way so I'm pretty happy with them All right, making some decisions here on team number two, deciding if they want to use some of this lace. Just keep in mind when you're deciding the best bag is going to win, right? So you just got to make, make good decisions. number one pretty happy they're back off the sewing machine so they can get four other tools in play here if they want yes 
Uh oh. We have a whistle on team number two. Team number two, we have a penalty. No, the tools have to be back on there. Okay, so they so they went to use their machine. No, that was that was in the goodie bag. They're good there, but they had a tool that was on the bench when they went to use the sewing machine. So they are. This is our second penalty of the night. Take that opportunity. Have a nice refreshment here. <laughs> Aaron brought his cheering crew with him. We love that. You brought your cheering crew with you, yes. Janie, Janie Sue, your support person that's here. Okay, we were a few seconds late starting, so go. All right, we're still going to town here on the sewing machine for team number three. Trevor's going back, checking some stuff on the table. Looks like he's looking, uh, looking for something. Something's lost. They started with such a clean work surface. Now they're missing things. Has that ever happened to anybody? Anybody get a messy shop and can't find anything? There you go, yeah, if he's not using that machine. Because that is an opportunity for another team to get in on that machine if it's not in use. Boy, he's got that head knife going. We may have to get the... Whew, thought we were going to be reaching for that first aid kit here for just a minute. Oh, so, Trevor, Trevor. Tell me, did you, you misplace one of your parts? Uh, no, it was just in plain sight on my table. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you had to just cut you a new one there? Is that what you were doing? Well, you see, we may have mismeasured something since we didn't have anything to measure with, so we may have had to cut an extra part, but <laughs> probably not. Maybe not. I love it. <laughs> Improvising on the fly. Okay, team number two, they're done on their sewing machine. They're going to gather up their four tools here. Going with a drive punch and a maul, but must have the wrong size drive punch. Going back for something else now. Uh-oh, there was one punch they need, and it's missing. Looks like it must be in play with team number one at this point. No, you have this one right here. Okay. Let's see, what tools do we have going on team number one here? We have a, we have a swivel knife, a drive punch, a maul. Now we have a ball peen hammer. We're using your swivel knife as a screwdriver. How to innovate. I know, sorry. Are we in trouble? Okay. 
There we go. We're doing a little innovating here on. Yeah, you can do however you want. It's all you. I'm pretty impressed with this whole triangle design you guys have going. That's awesome. <laughs> Aaron's support person is being being noticed online here. This is good. Okay, we got people online rooting Team Julie as well. This is fun. Excellent. I want to know, in the room here, who are you guys thinking is doing good and leaning towards winning here? So how about for team number one? Okay. How about here, the Bovine Bag Builders, team number two. <laughs> Aaron's confident, this is good. They're hiding in the corner at the sewing machine now, but how about Burn Saddleway, team number three? <laughs> so I gotta know, let you guys know too, when we talk to these teams, we told them we need to come up with team names, so send in your team names. The first one to respond in the group message was Aaron, and Aaron said, we're taking Burn Saturday so Matt can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Julie was next to comment and said, we're going we're gonna to go with 24 plus, but we changed our mind. <laughs> So teams, we're down to just 13 minutes left. 13 minutes left. I know this is probably way too much time, more than you wanted to have. Doing, oh, get out there. Lexi was waiting for the next tool. They're done sewing. Back to the table here. There, Matt has to come over here, check on team number two, see how they're doing. You know what I love is the willingness of all these guys to get out of their comfort zone and come do this competition. Get out of the way. Everybody's coming back for more tools here. Lexi's checking out the tool table, see, oh, there we go. Finding the edger she wants there. <laughs> Team number one, what do you think? Are you guys gonna be done in time? Yes, with confidence, they're gonna be done. We're down under 12 minutes to go. Aaron, what do you think? Are you guys going to be done in time? Yep. Less than 12 minutes. You're feeling good? Feeling confident? You're doing good. Yeah. Are you happy with the team you assembled here? I am ecstatic with the team I assembled here. <laughs> and what I like the most is when I told the other teams who was on my team, the look on their faces. getting resourceful here there we put in there's some conchos in their bags there were some Chicago screws in their bags we failed to put a screwdriver on the table oh team number one with 10 minutes to spare has their bag done Miss Julie modeling her bag up front here oh I love it there we go, Chloe bringing us in. This is a tidbit of trivia you guys may not know. This, 
Miss Chloe Davis, our previous princess and queen of the Pendleton Roundup. Denise Stringvello coming up to model their bag as well. String, yeah, Stringfellow Taylor, she's got some amazing work. Probably, yes, showing a little fringe we got on the edge there. Now, I'm not one of the judges, but that sure does look like a functional bag with a tooling aspect to it. All right, Matt Warner, team number three. There's is done. No, you have to model it. I go, yeah, let's see it here. There we go. Matt strutting the walk with his bag. Okay, functional. It is holding a bottle right now. Excellent. So, yeah, way too much time I gave you guys, huh? <laughs> All right, we're down. We have nine minutes left. Now, Aaron with the Bovine Bag Builders did tell me with confidence that they were going to be done in time. So we're going to see how this goes here. All right. Showing it off. So Matt showing off the tooling he did to Adam there with Herman Oak leather. So tell me, what do you think having to design and tool with the pressure knowing that your team was behind you building this bag waiting on your tooling pieces? Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but uh, we only had so many. Hey, you guys would have made mistakes too, okay? <laughs> Back off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, I was surprised how long it took to tool that. Usually it's a, a lot faster, but I don't know. It worked out good. These guys kick ass. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I'd say you're pretty happy with the team you assembled, oh, yeah. right? For sure. Excellent. Yep. All right, let's, we got to... Boy, we have a machine in play here, so we're doing the last minute stitching. We have eight minutes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> we're getting down there with their time. And team number one and team number three. None of them had to sign the first aid kit, so that's a win, right? Everybody still got all your digits? We're good. I was getting a little nervous. Oh, we have final touches. A little cleanup work here. I like it. We got, they got time. They're just doing their last little touch-ups there on their bag. Okay, team number two going back. They are down, it looks like, to just a strap attachment here. We'll just make sure everything is working together. They had conchos ready to go. Their holes are punched. Conchos are ready. Aaron does videos all the time on YouTube. Thousands and thousands of people watching. But it feels like there's 17,000 people watching them right now in this room, I bet, against the time. Teamwork going, both able to work on that bag, get conchos in at the same time. Checking on our time here. We're into the six minute range. tuning here. Trevor looks like a surgeon with that head knife over here. Nice, working on that last presentation of it. Okay, judges are able to start taking a peek at these bags here as they're going. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, 
Janie Sue is more nervous than anybody else on team number two right here. She's like, she's telling Aaron to get it together, keeping him on his time track here. I love it. We've got handles on there. Five minutes to spare. Oh, he has a finished bag. Okay. Now, our time is still good. Team number one, are you guys officially done? Officially done. No more tools touching the bag. They're officially done. Team number three, Matt, team captain, I got to hear it from you. Matt, Matt, hey, you're in a competition here. Hey, are you guys officially done? Yeah. Officially done. No more tuning up. Okay. I got to wait for the official from team number two as well. I was worried I give these guys too much time. It turns out we did. I think maybe next time we need to scotch it down just a little bit. working on their seams. So they did an inseam bag here, getting those all popped out, ready to go. It's I like... bags for sale, and <laughs> it's going to be a lot more expensive after it wins. So, Yo. chances now. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Yeah, you got to model it up here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, you're officially done. And we have three minutes on the clock. Every team finished with a completed bag. Give them a hand, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys just a minute on our judges here. What I would like you to do individually with your own opinions in each category, write your names. Here's your team captains down here, first, second, and third in each category, and write judge, your judge's name right next to there on your sheet. So the captains, the captains in each spot, whoever you thought was first, second, and third in each category. Okay? You guys work on that for a minute. Now, one, uh, one thing I want to say, would any of you guys been a little outside your comfort zone standing here trying to do that in front of a whole room full of people? Yeah. All right. I would like to collectively thank these three teams for stepping out and doing this. They... They didn't get a pile of information going into it. I actually gave them very, very little to start with, just as much as I thought I needed to to get them to say yes. And then we've slowly leaked out more information as we go. Uh, they didn't find out till I think, last week that they could each bring a tool. Matt finally asked me today, he's like, is there a certain bag we got to build or are we having to design it? <laughs> no, no, you got to design it, <laughs> the whole thing. So... They, they didn't see the tools any quicker than you guys did. The first time they saw the tools was right here tonight. So to be able to turn out the products that they did was pretty darn amazing. And we're excited to host this here tonight. Uh, again, I think every one of these live competitions we do, we just keep having more and more fun with them. So... Uh, Myself and my wife, on behalf of 23 Plus, would like to thank Misty and Brayden for bringing the... You guys, you guys do this Friday fun night each year at the show. We're honored that you would choose to host it here in the bays at 23 Plus with us. So thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Oh, you guys... Yeah, you guys have done an amazing job with the show. Uh, Everybody in the room here, too, thank you guys for coming and support this. This leather community is amazing. If, if you've been in it, you know, however many years, as long as Jim Linnell, or whether you just started this weekend and this is your very first leather show you've ever been to, 
this industry is made up of some amazing people and I'm just honored the friends that we get to meet each and every day in this industry. Uh, I know we do a lot of that online too, so now to have everybody come, check out the shop, be here in person, we love it. Love getting to put faces to names. Uh, in celebration, we're running the big sale in there, so check out 25% off all the supplies too. Uh, just as a thank you guys for coming, visiting with us and being here. We're, we're gonna keep going tonight, obviously. We're waiting, getting things tallied up, and we'll come back and announce the winners. Uh, food truck's still going. How about a big hand for our bartender back there, Jared? <laughs> I think I know nine people that are going to come visit you very shortly here, too. So. <laughs> but if you guys take a minute here, we're going to tally the scores, and we're going to be just a couple minutes away and we'll be right back to announce the winners here.
Okay. The judges have gone to work. They've tallied everything up. We do have a prize package for everybody. So. What, for the winners. Yes. Yeah. For the winners, we have a prize package here, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me about this prize package. Okay. The winning team, the coolest thing that we've got are custom sterling silver leather games buckles. So the winning team will get leather games buckles. Because, nod to Joe, who was a bull rider, we win buckles for winning. Right? Right. We win buckles. We have some leather from Maverick Leather. We also have, from our good dear friends at Leather Machine Co., Winners, 100 bucks to spend with Dave and his crew. And I think, uh, well, and we have these really special things that I'm going to show you later. <laughs> All right. So, again, I think we want to hear from you guys, what do you guys think? Online, if you're watching online, put it in the chat. I want to see what team do you guys think won. So, round of applause here. Let's go. Team number one. I'm going to go team number two. We're going to go team number three. All right, you guys are all pretty darn close there. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Is the judges thought it was pretty darn close too. <laughs> Secretively, I was really hoping for a tie. <laughs> because tiebreakers at our competitions are really fun. You guys are missing out on that because there is not a tie. Of all the points available on the table, there was actually only one point separating first to second and second to third. Like, this was close. I couldn't imagine it being any closer tonight, so this was awesome. Next time, we're definitely cutting the time down shorter. Way too long. Way too long. But we would like to congratulate the Leather Games champion, Burn Saddlery, Matt Warner. <laughs> With a one point difference, they do walk away our champions here tonight. Uh, come on up, guys. Bring, bring your winning bag, too. <laughs> In addition to that, they do have their cold hard cash, $450, nice. to split up among your team as well. All right. Okay. I got to tell you, I am absolutely not a fan of participation awards. But there are exceptions to every rule. 
and Misty, you may have found them. So we would like to present these, not the winner trophies, <laughs> to, <laughs> to <laughs> oh, that's good. I had no idea about that happening. So. You ain't first or last, baby. Okay. We would, I would like to get a good team picture of everybody here. And this is pretty awesome, bringing the leather games to Pendleton, Oregon. And you guys all made it happen. Uh, what I would love to have is if the teams with your bags could come stand on this side of your bench. I'm going to come over there and stand up on that sketchy stool and take a picture because I want all of these supporters in the background too. So if you're wanted in the state of Oregon, slip to the other room because this will go on social media. But teams, gather your things here. And if you guys could see the look my wife is giving me right now, that's even better here. Oh, there you go. Good strategy, Jim. <laughs> We're going to take a couple different ones here. I should have shimmed this stool up, I guess, too. It's like a little, a little wobbly there. Okay. All right. Okay. One time for everybody that made this event possible and all the contestants in here. Give them one big hand, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We have a fun evening left filled with live music, smash burgers, cold beer. Appreciate you guys being here tonight. Have fun the rest of the night and go enjoy the show tomorrow.